From the outside looking in, they were best friends. They do believe in their holding, holding faith that Alessis will come home. What could possibly happen to turn your best friend into your worst enemy? Sometimes your friends aren't really your friends. Nowadays, you have to watch out for people that don't really have your best interests. It'd be the ones smiling in your face one minute, and the next minute they're stabbing you right in the back. This is the story of Alexis Crawford. Hi guys, I'm Leah Fields. If you're new, welcome. If you want to bring awareness for black and brown victims, please share, subscribe, leave a thumbs up and comment below so you never miss a video. Alexis Crawford was a 21 year old from Athens, Georgia. She was one out of 10 siblings. She was from a very large family. She had four sisters and four brothers. And she also had a first cousin who was raised as a brother as well. So she came from a very close, tight knit family. And her parents loved her deeply. Alexis was known to be very kind, very warm, funny, affectionate, and she was also an artist, like she loved to sketch, and she was known to be ambitious. And that ambition led her to attend Clark Atlanta University. And she was a senior and studied criminal justice and also was a double major as well. So that just screamed to me, black girl magic. She was very smart. She was, you know, a go-getter, like she wanted to finish college. She was very artistic, which I thought was really cool as well. There's excitement being away at college and having experiences and building long lasting relationships. And Alexis did just that. For some of us, we all created a close relationship with our college roommates and Alexis was very close to hers. Her roommate was Jordan Jones. Jordan and Alexis were very close friends. Jordan attended holidays with Alexis' family, spending a lot of time together, shared an off-campus apartment together, and even though they spent a lot of time together, their friendship would turn very dark and very confusing for a lot of people. On October 26, 2019, Alexis, Jordan and Jordan's boyfriend, Baron Brantley, were all hanging out at the apartment. Alcohol was involved. So, you know, they're hanging out, they're listening to some music, whatever, you know, kikiing. And throughout the night, Baron started to make some unwanted advances towards Alexis that made her extremely uncomfortable. While Baron and, you know, Alexis are drinking, Baron started to feel like, hey, let me go ahead and start kissing Alexis on her neck. He starts touching her and she's like, uh, she's starting to feel weird. So she gets up and goes to her room and he actually started to follow her into her room. And later that night, she was found by Jordan passed out in the bathroom by herself. Alexis had blacked out and there was a pair of scissors on the floor and her underwear was cut up. That situation caused Alexis to feel very uncomfortable in her own apartment and she told her friends, her other friends, that she didn't want to sleep in her room at all. She went on to actually file a police report on October 27th with everything that happened. She told police that she blacked out and wasn't sure of everything that Brentley allegedly did. She eventually did go to Grady Memorial to get an exam done. Jordan knew what her boyfriend did. Jordan knew that Baron sexually assaulted Alexis because when Baron followed Alexis into her room that night, Baron locked the door and Jordan stated that she was banging on the door. Now, if that was me and my boyfriend was you know in a room with my friend knowing that my friend is drunk and blacked out i'm calling the police because at this point you're a threat to my friend and you're a threat to me so now we're going to move forward to october 30th which would be the last time alexis ever speaks to her family again alexis sister alexandria crawford sent a text around 8 p.m that night to her sister asking what are you doing for the weekend alexis replied nothing that would be the last text that anyone gets from Alexis. 
So a few days go by and her family is worried because, you know, there's no call from Alexis. There's no text messages from Alexis. That's not like Alexis to not reach out to her family. And like I said earlier on, she had a really good relationship with her family. And I'm pretty sure, you know, her friends are wondering, yo, where is Alexis? I can't get in touch with her. I haven't seen her in class. So the family and some of her friends are definitely worried. So on November 1st, Alexis Crawford was reporting missing. The Atlanta police began an investigation immediately because, you know, she was a Clark student missing. So that's a huge thing as well. Parents are worried, students are worried, teachers are worried. So the family had pleaded in tears for Alexis to return. She just vanished. As you can see, the emotions are running very deep. Um, this is a praying, believing um, family and they do believe in their holding, holding faith that Alexis will come home. And so we are petitioning yet again the public for your assistance in those efforts. The family and the community are bringing this case to light where Alexis is flooding all over social media. And I honestly remember looking on my social media during that time and seeing a post that said, hey, Alexis Crawford is missing, have you seen her? Roommate Jordan is also deeply concerned about Alexis going missing. She's putting it all over her social media that, hey, have y'all seen my friend? And you know, Jordan seems very distraught. She seems worried. And investigators did ask Jordan, hey, you're a roommate. When is the last time you seen Alexis? Prior to the week of the in-depth investigation on October 30th, that exact night, Jordan told investigators that Alexis asked her to bring her to the liquor store. Even though they weren't speaking to each other much since the alleged sexual assault that, you know, happened to Alexis, Alexis was still, you know, interacting with Jordan because, hey, you know, they still live together. So there was definitely still exchanging some words between each other. And you can see Alexis here on a surveillance camera at DNM. The following morning, Jordan said she left for class and Alexis wasn't in the apartment. It won't be until November 8th, 2019, following a week-long search for Alexis, that she will be found but not alive. Alexis was found in a plastic bin located at the Exchange Park in Decatur, Georgia. Baron Brantley, Jordan's boyfriend, admitted to investigators he had choked and killed Alexis. Now at this point, everyone is in shock, but am I surprised? No. And Barrett didn't do all of this by himself either. He had help from his girlfriend, Jordan. The Jordan that was all up in Alexis' face, smiling. You know, the same Jordan that was going to Alexis' house for, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Hey, you know, we're besties. Yeah, that same Jordan helped her boyfriend murder Alexis Crawford. And what caused Alexis' death was that while they were hanging out that night, when Jordan took Alexis to get, you know, some things at DNM, they got back to the apartment and a fight broke out. They started, you know, arguing and the argument led to a physical altercation. So now Baron jumps in and strangled Alexis to death and Jordan grabbed a black plastic bag and put it over Alexis' head, helping Baron. And now they're both considered murderers. Were the signs always there? One of Alexis's close friends took to Facebook with her frustrations after Jordan was arrested. Alexis trusted you, she wrote, even after I told her for three years straight not to. You gave her so many red flags of why you could not be trusted. What is Alexis Crawford was sexually assaulted and she still stayed in that environment. She didn't share any news with her family. And I can only imagine, you know, the tension and weirdness in that home between Jordan and Alexis. And for some reason, I also feel like Jordan probably was jealous of Alexis. You know, Alexis had a lot of things going on. Alexis had family that really loved her. You know, she saw her boyfriend push up on Alexis and was could have been jealous of that as well. Jordan and Baron was sent to jail as they should. The charges were murder, felony murder, aggravated assault, you know, counseling the death of another. And Baron already had a criminal background as well charged with killing a roommate is accused of trying to cover up the crime and to leave the state. Prosecutors arguing it is too risky to let Jordan Jones out on bail 
on bond, out of jail on bond while she awaits trial. Police say she was killed just days after Crawford accused Brantley of sexually assaulting her. Caitlin Ross is walking us through the new allegations leveled today in court. Caitlin. Yeah, today we heard from those parties. Prosecutors asked the judge to keep Jordan Jones in custody, saying they think if she's allowed to post bond, she would try to intimidate witnesses or even leave Georgia. They say while Jones was allegedly trying to hide Crawford's body, she was also packing. Um, she had sent a message after she um, helped stuff um, Ms. Crawford's body into the Rubbermaid tote to a friend asking her to replace that tote so um, she could put her clothes uh, from her home. Three. Prosecutors also accused Jones of lying to Crawford's family about the alleged sexual assault involving Jones's boyfriend. They say Jones called Crawford's family and told them a rape kit at the hospital did not contain any DNA evidence. Prosecutors say that's a flat out lie and the kit does contain Brantley's DNA. The defense argues Jones supported Crawford after she was allegedly assaulted, even going with her to the hospital. They also say Jones only tried to withdraw from Clark Atlanta within the past two days. Still, the judge did not grant bond today. Jones and Brantley are both due back in court again tomorrow for a preliminary hearing where we could hear from detectives in the case. Hey guys, so I wanted to add a quick update regarding Jordan and Barron's, you know, trial. So previously back in 2019, Jordan and Barron both pleaded not guilty and they both were denied bond. But as of August 2020, Jordan especially is requesting bond. You know, they feel like she should get another chance. She was never in trouble prior, never had a criminal record, only a traffic ticket. So her lawyers are really pushing her to get bound. I got a call yesterday from Alexis' mother, whom I've become a confidant and an advisor to, asking for help because the district attorney's office in Fulton County had reached out to Ms. Crawford indicating that there's a bond hearing scheduled for tomorrow where Jordan Jones is requesting bond and to be released from custody. I think it is important for the people in this community and across the country to remember that Jordan Jones was Alexis' roommate, but she was also considered by Alexis to be her best friend in an act of ultimate betrayal. Jordan strangled and murdered Alexis alone. Now we can't forget that she literally murdered Alexis. She lied about murdering Alexis. Jordan Jones' behavior has been diabolical from the very beginning. A lot of times, you know, we're friends to other people, but they, again, are not friends to us. Renowned psychologist Dr. Sherry Blake has examined the case and questions if Jordan was ever a true friend to Alexis. Alexis probably felt she was a close friend of Jordan. She may have even viewed Jordan as a sister and trusted her. But that doesn't mean Jordan felt the same way about Alexis. Friends who didn't go on camera told us the ladies were very different. Alexis, often warm and welcoming. Jordan, sometimes distant. Before her death, Alexis reported that Jordan's boyfriend, Baron Brantley, sodomized her while she was unconscious. She was uh, accusing uh, Mr. Brantley of uh, sexual assault. That accusation may have been the final turning point in a downward, dangerous spiral with Jordan. While she was engaged in a, a fight with her, Mr. Brantley came out of the bedroom and choked her. And while he was choking Ms. Crawford, uh, Jordan Jones put a plastic bag over her head. Do you think this all boiled down to protecting Barron from a rape charge? Of course. Dr. Sherry says it appears Jordan was willing to do anything to defend and protect Barron. And no remorse that I can see. So we asked again, what kind of person could do that? A person that's unfortunately emotionally mentally unstable underneath. I mean, there's a lot of anger. There's a lot of stuff that we may not even um, consider that was going on with Jordan. And I think this case is going to be very painful, but it's going to be a rude lesson and an eye opener to young college students, young females everywhere. I really, really hope that the judge does not grant Jordan Jones or Baron Brantley bond and sent them and sentence them away for good because they deserve it. I mean, they should be put away for life if you ask me. And I really, really pray that this family gets justice because as of 2021, there are no current updates. This is still an ongoing trial. I don't know if it's low 
due to you know covid and things are you know pretty much changing but i would definitely keep you guys updated regarding you know their trial but as of right now this family doesn't have any justice served because if it was me if i'm alexis mother if i'm alexis family member i'm gonna want them put away for good I don't want no bonds. I want them to be put away for life. Why should they have bond? Why should they have another, you know, second chance? They literally murdered this girl for no reason. This case affected a lot of people to the point people wanted the death sentence granted on Jordan and Baron, but the judge didn't grant that wish. We lost another young black girl for literally no reason. And this is why I encourage people to please make sure you have good people around you don't ignore the signs you know because your friends is not always your friends and protect yourself as well and i'm really proud of alexis that she filed that report against Baron because many women would have just let it go she did the right thing she did the right thing and i encourage many people many college students as well as well many black college girls please file a report tell your family tell your friends and i definitely feel like that argument that happened that night in the home was caused because alexis filed that report against you know jordan's boyfriend the family was so surprised when they found out that jordan was guilty of murdering alexis and pretty much sick to their stomach they weren't expecting jordan to even do that to Alexis. The family shared some words about the case as well. They knew Jordan, they liked Jordan. There was never a reason to suspect that Jordan would do anything wrong or ill to Alexis. One family member described them as two peas in a pod. To go from that to where we are today is unthinkable, unspeakable. You gotta be cautious of who you have around you. And I'm a testament of that because I did make a video, if y'all haven't seen it, called I Live Next to a Serial Killer. Um, this was a family friend. He was my uncle's best friend. I mean, he was all up in, you know, my family's face, smiling like you never thought there was anything wrong with him. And he eventually killed his whole family. He lived right down the street from us too. You know, and I thank God that he protected us from that situation because he literally could have done a whole killing spree. Alexis funeral was held on November 16th, 2019 at the Hill Chapel Baptist Church where her family gathered and friends. And even though this was back in 2019, I'm sure the family and friends are still mourning and hurting to this very day. They're still trying to heal losing a daughter a sister a niece a friend and i'm going to start ending my videos differently guys i'm going to start praying for the victim's family at the end of each video i am a christian i believe in jesus christ and i believe that sometimes we can get so caught up with these cases that we forget you know about the families after the case you know these families are still hurting they're still dealing with pain and i don't know it was just really on my spirit to like really just start praying for the victims family because even though alexis crawford was important her story is important these families are still important as well i'm gonna go ahead and start praying now if you want to stay for the prayer you are welcome if not you can you know exit out it's up to you Father God, I pray for Alexis Crawford's family. I pray for her parents, her brother, her sister. I pray for her friends, Father Lord God. I pray, Father Lord God, that they get just some healing into their lives, into their hearts, into their minds. I know that they're still mourning this very day, Father Lord God. I pray for protection over that family in Jesus' name. I pray for protection over Alexis Crawford's siblings, her sisters, and her brothers, Father Lord God. I pray for the Clark University um, right now in Jesus name. I pray Father God of protection over every student Lord God I pray that every student is aware of their surroundings and the friends they have around them Lord God And I just thank you Lord God for just creating this platform to tell Alexis Crawford's story and I thank you Father Lord God for you know my viewers right now i pray for protection over my viewers father lord god and i pray that everyone just stays alert stay safe in jesus name i pray amen 
but thank you guys so much for watching thank you for praying if some of you guys did let's keep alexis crawford's story alive and i will see you guys in the next video oh,